Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to The Source Code, my name is Deshaun, and today we are going to be looking at creating server signs and server connect signs, and we're going to sort of be implementing everything that we've learned thus far, and it's going to be really awesome, and I'm actually pretty excited. So once again, all the code will be available for you guys on GitHub, so if you're having troubles, just go over there and check it out. But the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to go ahead to our main class and we are going to switch this from plugin to Java plugin, which means you're going to need to add your spigot jar back into this and you can get rid of your bungee jar because you're not going to need it for this video. So this is sort of like a hybrid video like we sort of did before, but it's still using stuff from bungee cord, but it's going to be a little bit more practical because you're going to be using it with spigot. So the next thing I did is I just made a some public instances of my events class, my plugin message class, and then my plugin message class. I just went ahead and made it, and I just uh, <clears throat> initialized both of them. Am I on enable? Made a configuration, and then in my configuration here, I have server names, which is hub and survival. You gotta make sure those are exactly how they are written in your bungee cord config. Uh, you could actually, if you really really wanted to, um, make an in a file that paths all the way to your Bungie server and just reads right from your Bungie config. Kind of sloppy, easier to just make a separate config this way. So in our events class here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, well, first thing, we might as well just do this in our main class here. We're gonna be using the plugin message channel. So we need to go ahead and say this .git server .git messenger register outgoing plugin channel. It's gonna be this and then Bungie cord. And we've already done this in many, many past videos. So if you're unsure what we're doing, uh, you gotta go check those out. Uh, then we're gonna change this to incoming and we're gonna keep this as this plugin or this bungee cord. And then we're gonna go ahead and say plugin message because that's the plugin messenger class. And then finally, we are just going to go ahead and register our events. Get plugin, if I can spell, get plugin manager and register events and it is going to go ahead and be events and this perfect so now we'll jump right over here to our events class and then inside of here we are just going to make a pretty simple event handler and make sure you import spigot if you still have your bungee jar in there you don't want to import the wrong one and we're just going to call this player sign hit and this is going to be a player interact event an event and now with the signs and getting signs, it's uh, a little complicated. I did make a video about it very, very long ago. Um, but we're going to go ahead and say block. And let's just uh, make sure we import the right one here. Block, block equals event dot get clicked block. Let's go ahead and grab the player, event dot get player. And then the next thing we're going to do is you can add in some system outputs if you want to. Uh, it'd be a good way to keep track of how far your code is going. Uh, since I know that mine works, I'm not going to do it. Um, watch, it doesn't work. But uh, so, yeah, since I know that it works, I, I don't need to add in the system outs because I know that everything should work. Uh, but if you don't know if it's gonna work, add in some system.outprints and it's just a nice easy way to keep track of sort of where your code is halting if it's not working. But we're gonna go ahead and say if block does oops does not equal null and block dot get state is an instance of a sign. Make sure you import the block and not the material. We are gonna go ahead and instance our sign to this block because we now know that it is an instance of a sign. So we can just say block dot get state. And now we can get access to all of our signs or our sign methods. So now we can go ahead and say if sign dot get line and zero because it's the first line dot equals ignore case. And we are just going to go ahead and say join. And you can make this whatever you want, whatever you want your server signs to be. Um, so have at it. Then we're going to go ahead and say if plugin dot get config dot get string list. Oops, string list. And we named ours uh, server names, I believe. Lowercase s, so lowercase s. So make sure it's case sensitive. And if it contains sign.getLine1, 
which is going to be our plugin name. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and say, oops, get rid of that. Then the next thing we're gonna go ahead and say is we're just gonna say plugin message. And we are just going to go ahead and say connect. It's not made yet, but I um, obviously I have the code over here on my other screen here. Um, just makes it a little easier to code these videos. So I don't have to sort of remember. I mean, I do know how to do it all, but it's just easier if I have it right here on the side. Uh, but since I already know what's going to be going in here, which is going to be a player, then the server name dot get line one. Cool. So now what we can do is we can go here or we, we can go to our plugin message now. And we got a few things we got to do in here. So we are going to go ahead and make a private <coughs> Boolean. This is going to be server online. And this is actually going to equal false at first. By default, we want this to equal false because we don't want it to be true. Uh, and then in the case when we do what we're going to do next, uh, the player ends up getting an error message or something like that. So now on our plugin message, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and say at override and public void on oops on plugin message receive I can spell received it's going to be a string and channel it's going to be our player and player and then it's going to be our byte array of message cool so now what we can do is we can say if the channel does not equal <coughs> bungee cord with a capital B and a capital C we are just going to go ahead and return that then we're going to go ahead and say byte array data input and this is going to be input byte streams dot new data input and message again I already had made videos on this so I'm kind of cruising by this the plugin message channel um, I'm gonna what I'm gonna be doing next is the part that's sort of really important here so I won't fly as much through that I just want to get through all of this uh, so all right so then what we're, oh, we gotta throw an equal sign in there that might help okay then we're gonna go ahead and say string sub channel equals input dot read oops not read line read UTF then we're gonna go ahead and say if, <clears throat> now this is important here. So when you're looking at the subchannels, uh, say we had the subchannel for connect, which we do, um, I could have this print something out or send something to the player when this happens. So like a response, this is like the response section as it kind of makes sense on plugin message receive. Once it receives the plugin message, it's gonna do something. And now you can have this do anything. It doesn't have to just send a message it can actually execute methods and everything else. So we're gonna go ahead and say if subchannel dot equals server IP, we are going to go ahead and say string server name equals input dot read UTF. Then we're gonna go ahead and say string dot IP equals input dot read UTF. Then we're gonna go ahead and say int port equals input dot read unassigned short and then server online is going to equal check IP which we don't have made yet we'll have it made in just one second and it's going to take an int and a port which is the int and the port that we just did and now we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and create this method I just said let's go ahead let's go ahead twice but I just did it again Okay, so now we have check IP. Now this is a, a little complicated here, depending, um, I guess. <laughs> so what we wanna do in here is we are just going to go ahead and send some messages first. So we're gonna say git server dot git console sender dot send message and check color dot yellow. And we're going to say plus sending ping request to and then we will just say IP plus this plus port. Now that's not complicated. Now the next part is where it starts to get a little complicated, but not really. So we're going to be basically sending a ping request to our other Bungie server um, using sockets. And now we're using the server IP plugin message to get the IP of 
the name for the second line of the sign. And then it's gonna say, okay, the IP for this server is so-and-so and the port is 25562, which is gonna be the port for the server that we're gonna be looking at. So we're just gonna go ahead and say socket, socket equals new socket. Then we're gonna say s, or yes, s dot connect equals new inet socket address, IP, port, and a timeout, which is, we're just gonna set ours as 20. So pretty, pretty easy stuff so far. And it's, oops, that doesn't need to go there. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and say as close. So it's gonna try and if it fails, it's gonna fail. <laughs> and it's just gonna catch itself. But if it doesn't, oops, we are going to go ahead and send a green message. And we are just going to change this to plus port is reachable. Now you don't have to do these messages. I like to do them just for the sake of being able to read it in console. I just think it's nice. But then we're going to add our exceptions here, which is just going to be unknown host exception. And I believe it's that. And then IO exception E outputs here. Well, I guess we can just do the IO exception here. just to make it easy. But if you want, you can you can do the unknown host. Uh, I'm just lazy and I'm not going to. So then we're just gonna go ahead and say return true here because we want it to return true. And we're gonna go ahead and say return false. And we're gonna copy it. Oops, that was weird. I could have copied my whole line. And we're gonna copy it and paste it in. And we're gonna say is offline. And we'll just change this to red. And we'll make sure we return false. Very good. So now we have our check IP and now we just need one more thing, which is going to be our public void connect, which is going to take care of all of this for us and make sure and run all this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and say is player, player and string and a server. So then here we're gonna go ahead and say byte array data output which is going to be the server IP. And now we're gonna make two different byte array outputs here because if you try to do it on the same one, it won't work. Um, and you know, if you wanted to clear it, you could do that or set it to null. Uh, and then new data output, we'll just copy this. And then this one's going to be server connect because these are gonna be two different plugin messages. So we're gonna say server, oops, server IP dot write UTF server IP. Then we're gonna say server IP dot write UTF and then the server name and then player dot send plugin message and plugin and bungee cord and server IP dot two byte array. Now what we need to do, oops, let's bring that back there. Now we need to go ahead and check to see if our server online is true. And if it is, we can go ahead and say server connect dot write UTF connect server connect dot write UTF server. And then we can just go ahead and copy this one down to here and server connect dot two byte array. And then we wanna just go ahead and set server online to be false. Now, if you did make a server manager um, that basically encapsulated all of your separate bungee cord servers, so that way you could just set the, you know, set the actual encapsula encapsulation in the hash map, um, which would be a lot cleaner and easier, um, but this way also works too. So now we're just gonna go ahead and build this. All right, and let's go ahead and jump over to our second screen here. And we're just going to reload our servers here. So reload, reload, and then we'll jump back over to our main screen here. Okay, so I did totally leave out one little thing here. Uh, you do have to put this, the server um, connect in a runnable for and delay it. Um, I would say at least five ticks um, because it doesn't have enough time between this being run 
to this being run to get this value from the boolean. Um, so just go ahead and make sure you do that and you should be well on your way there to uh, get this working here. Uh, so if we go over to our second screen here, if I click reload here, and I'll just pull this over to here so you, just so you can see it. And if I click join now, you can see there that it says the server is reachable and we were able to connect. And if I just go ahead and click reload, um, server hub, because I did get rid of those console messages. So, oh, or I guess I done it. Let me reload. And let's just try that one more time. Let's make sure I'm on the screen though. There we go. So those messages are gone. But if we go ahead and do server hub, and if we turn off the server and we click this, you can see there that that localhost 25562 is offline. So we can no longer ping that server. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.